Every year, the National Urban League releases its highly anticipated report on the state of black America. The report has become the national touchstone for the social and economic status of African American and Hispanic communities. Each year, we ask the question, what is the state of black America? Today, Mark H. Morial, the president and CEO of the National Urban League, will discuss solutions and best practices for overcoming the challenges facing our communities and the league's national campaign, Redeem the Dream, Jobs Rebuild America. Welcome, Mark. How are you? Hey, Jeff. Good to be with you. Thank you. 37 years of reporting uh, what the state of black America is and really now taking a 50-year snapshot. Why was this report more important than any that you've done in the past? I think because it's a chance to go back to 1963, uh, the year of the March on Washington, the death of Medgar Evers, the death of the four little girls and John Kennedy, and, but also the year when the Civil Rights Act was introduced in the Congress by President Kennedy, and then come all the way to 2013 with President Obama in the White House and say, how far have we come? The truth is, there's been enormous progress. Mm -hmm. The high school graduation rates are higher. The college uh, degree rates are higher. The number of African American elected officials is indeed far higher than it's been. There have been tremendous changes in the nation. Mm -hmm. Corporate suites have changed. On the other hand, the other side of the coin is, is that uh, the level of violence, the level of economic disparity, the unemployment rate, the joblessness rate are far too high. And in many respects, the economic comparisons haven't changed markedly mm -hmm. in that 50 year period. Well, and I remember two years ago during the State of Black America, you were very serious about jobs, jobs, jobs. And that was before a lot of people understood the necessity of our organizations focusing there. As you have laid out this 37th state of black, black America, what is the Urban League doing to be able to respond to what we're seeing as we look at double digit unemployment continue to exist for African Americans? You know, our thrust this year is jobs rebuild America. So the Urban League prides itself on being the do tank versus the think tank or the talk tank, the do tank. So what is Jobs Rebuild America? It's number one, a commitment by the National Urban League of $70 million over the next five years to fund local job training, entrepreneurship, and after-school programs. Mm -hmm. We'll be working in about 30 communities. Our job training programs will run the gamut from programs that help train those who have been incarcerated to programs that try to assist college grads mm. with finding jobs. Our entrepreneurship programs will assist small businesses in cities like Cleveland, Atlanta, Los Angeles, 10 cities to be exact, to grow their businesses and create mm. jobs. You know, Jeff, we decided two years ago at that State of Black America that what we were going to do is not only lift our voice, but we were going to lift our shovel. Mm -hmm. We were going to go out and create some initiatives, get those initiatives funded, and in 2013, we began to deploy and expand the work we're doing. So we're going to create some jobs. Uh, we're going to train people. We're going to build some businesses. And I think the inspiration is, is we want the nation to see that notwithstanding all of the battles in Washington, D.C., we can put people to work by creating jobs, by training people, by preparing our youth for tomorrow. Well, and, and part of it, clearly, if, if you're talking about jobs rebuild America, Americans have to be a part of that effort. So how did you decide and who are you teaming up with at the local level to be able to make that real? You know, we team with our network of 95 affiliates, and those affiliates are in Cleveland, the Cleveland Urban League, mm -hmm. uh, in Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Urban League, in Chicago, the Chicago Urban League. We've got 95 affiliates across the nation. So we're going to be funding those affiliates, uh, approximately 25 to 30 of them mm. through sub-grants which come from dollars we've raised from the government. We're partnering with the Department of Labor, uh, with uh, some major companies which include, uh, amongst others, uh, the Walmart organization and a number of other private businesses. Uh, we're going to be partnering with some foundations who are supporting our work. So together, we've brought money from a variety of sources to fund the affiliates of the mm -hmm. National Urban League to help them do this important work. But that's the real model moving forward, right? That's because at the, the end of the day, all of the weight shouldn't be on one group. 
It should be on how are we bringing to the table the best and brightest from multiple sectors to make this happen. Well, you know what's exciting? That's what Washington hasn't been able to do. And, you know, in the last year we've had, as you know, uh, an important convening coming together of African-American leaders, along with Ben Jealous, mm -hmm. uh, Reverend Al, and Melanie Campbell. We've pulled together 50-plus uh, organizational leaders who focus on the African-American community. From those discussions, the emphasis on jobs, poverty, income, inequality, and economic disparities mm -hmm. is what everyone votes time and time again has to be our number one purpose. 13.3 percent unemployment rate in the African-American community is unacceptable and it's too high. We've got to continue to demand action while at the same time the Urban League is leading by example. We're saying we're not just demanding that others act, we're also doing it ourselves. Well, well and with that, and, and whether it's the Coalition of 50 or whether it's the Urban League alone, there's been a challenge that African American leadership has had in addressing President Obama and his administration. Some want to just celebrate, some want to challenge in an unproductive way. How difficult have you found it navigating that space? And in this second term, what will you and the Urban League you do know, a little bit differently? It's, uh, it's a challenge because it's something new at the national level, but it candidly reminds me uh, of the same relationship that many leaders had with the first generation of African-American mayors, hmm. of which my father was one. And so we have a responsibility to constructively engage. What that means is when the president is supporting the initiatives uh, that benefit our community, it is very important that we visibly and vigorously, vigorously cheer him on. When the president uh, uh, needs a push, we have to supply that push. That's why out of the African American leaders convening, we issued a set of recommendations. Mm -hmm. We issued a set of written recommendations to the White House, preliminary recommendations, as you will. And you saw in his State of the Union, people may have not connected the dot. He proposed the reintroduction of the American Jobs Act. Mm -hmm. He proposed an expansion of early childhood education. He proposed the Promise Neighborhood Expansion Program, which is a targeted initiative. I like to believe that the African-American leaders and the National Urban League's advocacy and work affected that. But that's just a start. We've got to make that a reality. So we have to encourage the president to use all of his might and all of his power while understanding that on the issues that are important to us, he's against a dogged opposition, mm -hmm. a group of people who do not want to give him a quarter, don't want right. to give him a nickel, don't want to give him a penny, and don't want to give him an inch. So we've got to be mindful of that. But we've got to remember that it is our community and our community's interests which we have to place first. So in closing, what do you say to somebody sitting at home that says, I'm hearing what Mark Morial is saying, I support the president, but I want to challenge to see more, I want to see more jobs increase, I want to work at my local level. Why is the Urban League poised for them to be involved and how do they get First involved? First of all, it's easy for them to get involved because they can become, number one, a part of our online community. Mm -hmm connect with our advocacy, learn about our programs. Number two, they can become a member of the Urban League affiliate in their own hometown. You can do both of the above by simply going to NUL.org. You can connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we are at at Nat Urban League. I'm at, uh, my, I'm at at Mark Morial. And you can be a part of our community and a part of our engagement. So we'd like people to consider being involved on the national level and on a local level. And I would say if you go to www.nul.org mm -hmm. and you're looking for a job and you go right to the top, right to the top of the web page and press the button Urban League Jobs Network, it'll open the door to maybe 5,000 job listings. Wow. Jeff, we're trying to do it. Not just talk it, not just speak it, but do it and act it. Well, Mark, thanks so much for the thanks, time. Jeff. I appreciate it. You all, let's please thank Mark Morial for this dynamic conversation. Please share this web series with your show, social media friends and followers. And let's continue the solution session using the hashtag SOBA13. Now you get involved. 
The State of Black America web series is presented by AT&T. Thank you, AT&T, for your continued support of the National Urban League. We also thank Comcast for their production support of the State of Black America web series. Together, we are empowering communities and changing lives. You can join me every Sunday from 5 to 7 p.m. on my digital show, The Intersection, at www.blissblis.fm or follow me on Twitter at Jeff's Nation for more information on the state of black America and to purchase the book, and please purchase it. Visit the National Urban League and become a member at NUL.org. Hello, National Urban League. My name is Cynthia Marshall, Senior Vice President for Human Resources for AT&T. On behalf of our more than 240,000 employees, we're excited to support, for the third year, the National Urban League's State of Black America report and discussion. Our commitment to diversity is vital to the success of our company. For AT&T, an innovative, diverse, and competitive workforce ultimately begins with providing better educational opportunities for everyone. And that is why we remain supportive of the State of Black America's report. I am reminded of Maya Angelou's beautiful statement about all threads in the tapestry being equal in value, no matter what their color. Or the poignant words of Mikhail Gorbachev, that peace is not unity in sameness, but unity in diversity. For AT&T, this understanding of diversity's value is one of our bedrock convictions. Our partnership with you underscores our deep commitment to diversity and empowerment. And so today, we salute the National Urban League on another successful, substantive, and thought-provoking report. Job well done, Mark Morial.